See a bitch you like, we're gonna drop you there, okay? <laughs> and that is gonna be your new land. <laughs> do you? Then you never met Blackjack Savage. This Blackjack, he was a pirate. Killed a hundred men before they stretched his old neck. Heading straight away for hell he is, unless he saves the lives of a hundred living men. There's a modern day pirate too, name of Barry Tarberry, the richest man in New York. And for his lifetime of evil doing, he's hellbound himself, unless he joins up with old Blackjack, that is, saving all those lives. And they'll save every last one of them, the hundred lives of Black Jack Savage. discovered the salsa. Definitely didn't get it from a jar. How do you know? It tastes fresh, chunky. Oh, I don't believe this. I've eaten the whole bowl. Relax. There's more over there. Where? Ortega salsa. You'll never know it comes out of a jar. How long will the flavor of carefree sugarless gum last? Till the cows come home. Welcome home. Every peppermint with NutraSweet, the flavor lasts. Wendy's has a new cheeseburger with a quarter pound of fresh beef, three full strips of bacon with mushrooms and a delicious cheddar cheese sauce, all on a toasted Kaiser bun. Introducing Wendy's Bacon Mushroom Melt. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. Alka-Seltzer's Laws of Indigestion, law number seven. The one food you cannot tolerate will always be served by your in-laws. You have some sauce. For indigestion with headache, you need Alka-Seltzer because there's no law against fast relief. Extra, it's a new unsolved mystery. Help catch a cult leader who lived in royal splendor while his follower lived in misery. A new unsolved mystery on NBC Wednesday. For NBC Special Monday, we took three of the biggest superstars on the tube. This is gonna be good. Added the adorable Cosby clan. They are adorable, aren't they? And let them make comedy magic. It's their job. First, it's a special Monday Cosby show. Then, Jasmine Guy guest stars on The Fresh Prince. A special NBC Monday. Massage, Senor Talberi. 
No, um, listen, Raul, no matter what I say, all right, just keep going. Here, here's $20. Ignore me. Just pretend you can't hear me. Cecil, this is a very nice place, Barry. What do they get for a daiquiri here? Jack, this is my special place. Now, I can't get anyone to work up at my castle because of your overrated legend. One, take off. Get out of here. I don't guess your being here would have anything to do with the fact that Danielle swims laps here every day at about noon. Is she? Barry, Barry, you should give up on her. The lady speaks five languages, and she can say no in all of them. <sighs> Listen, Barry. I've got a line on some lives. No, no, I'm out of the life-saving game. What are you talking about? Your pal, Larry, has got more rules than Miss Manners. I think he makes them up as he goes along. I can't do business like that. Is this some sort of renegotiation ploy, Barry? Because if it is, why don't we just get it over with now? <sighs> Raul, lighten up, will you? I'm not into that deep tissue stuff. <laughs> Look, Barry, these people, the Coromantes, they live in the interior. <sighs> Now, they are direct descendants of slaves I helped to free 300 years ago. My spirit is supposed to protect them. Thanks, Raul. Very ranchers want to clear-cut the trees the Coromantes make their living from. They've hired thugs to try and get rid of them. The Coromantes are trying to organize. What? Organize what? Unions? <laughs> I made my bones bust in unions. Back in 83, my hotel workers walked out on me. <laughs> that is a very nice story, Barry, except for the fact that I want you to help the Coromantes organize. You want me to organize a union? I'd rather have my prostate taken out with a soldering iron. Bro, lighten up. I'm serious. Barry. Barry, have I ever asked you to do anything for me without there being something in it for you? Constantly. What, do you think I'm just going to drop everything and take off for the interior? I know what goes on up there. Flies that lay eggs in your ears. Lizards that can enter into a rodeo. and Fish that swim right up your... Okay, okay. So it's not Club Med. Bro. What a coincidence. Well, hello, Mr. Talbert. Listen, are you free to join me for lunch? I've I picked up some lovely brie cheese and a very boisterous little bottle of rosé wine. It's delicate but pungent. I'd really love to share it with you. Thank you, but I don't think so. What am I doing wrong, Daniel? Look, the only reason you're interested in me is because I keep saying no to you. Well, then say yes, and I'll stop bothering you. Barry, here's the thought. Why not try sincerity? Now, that's just crazy enough to work. You want to help the Coromantes? I enjoy saving lives, helping others. This is part of a Southern Exchange deal I made recently. Well, look, if you're really sincere about this... Oh, I am. ...then I think we should go up into the interior as soon as possible. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of talking to Abel Vasquez. I mean, I have great influence there. When you see Vasquez, I have two words for him. Dental bonding. Cannot you see I am in the middle of an important negotiation? Abel, I forget. Which one is this salad for? The little one. I need you to send some of your police into the interior to help the Coromantes. I would not attempt to get involved in this internal matter, Mr. Tarberi. The interior is no place for a man of your, let us say, delicate nature. The road is plagued with bandits, and the river is not much better. Oh, you are so lovely, my dear. More wine, please, wait. Logan! Logan! Mr. Murphy's not in, especially for you, Mr. Tarberry. I'm sensing some hostility here, Logan. My name is Isosceles. If you'd like to leave a message for Mr. Murphy, press the red button on my upper right quadrant. Logan, I know you're still here. Your cocoa's warm. You haven't compensated me. I mean, Logan, for work performed. You've neglected his past due notices and ignored his mechanics lanes. I don't believe it. Ignore the man behind the curtain. He has a return receipt! No, I mean that my accountants haven't paid you yet! Logan, have you ever seen anyone get fired? Including me? Well, you're about to see what happens when you screw up working for Barry Tarberry because my accountants are history! 
You're a valued vendor of Tarberry Enterprises. And if I don't have that, I don't have anything. I can't believe you used my own thermal imaging location detector to find me. That's unethical. On second thought, I'm going to do you a big favor. I'm not going to pay you with just money. Gee, I don't know what to say. Although I'm pretty sure a thank you would be inappropriate. I am going to issue you some special Class C non-voting restricted rights stock in Tarbury Enterprises. Great. I always wanted to be in the market, seeing as I'm independently wealthy. I mean, I must be, because I keep working for you without getting paid. Logan, do you know what would happen if I just paid you with money? I eat regularly? Oh, no, the government would get its cut right off the top. Federal taxes, state taxes, local taxes, FICA. We're talking upwards of 48%. But stock. They don't tax, not until you sell it. And even then, it's taxable at a capital gains rate of only 28%. Plus, you avoid the alternative minimum tax. And you get to carry forward any taxable losses. But I can't use stock to buy equipment. Logan, have you ever tried? No, but... Well, it just so happens that I need to buy a boat about 35 feet long to go upriver with. Would 10,000 shares be enough? Listen, I can't... Logan, the Coromantes need your help. And Danielle St. Clair is going to appreciate your contribution. Miss St. Clair is going up the river in a boat with you? She's already told me that she finds your shyness engaging and your intellect stimulating. You dirty little dog, you. <laughs> I gotta run, little buddy. What's your point? Can you say something? Yes, I was praying. I was praying that we're not too late to help the Coromantes. You're a real enigma, Mr. Tarbury. That's not the word I'd use. Okay, okay, I'm going. <laughs> you know, if, uh, if you're going to continue to call me Mr. Tarbury, I'm going to have to turn this tub around. All right. I'm sure you think that at the drop of a hat I'm off helping this cause and that, but I only have one cause, San Pedro. Why? The social causes pay very little. Can someone do something without anything in it for themselves? No. It goes against all human nature. Do you know what a siren girl is? It's a rubber plantation. In the early 1900s, during the rubber boom, Tens of thousands of illiterate workers were used to harvest the rubber. They were exploited, enslaved, and ultimately abandoned when the boom died. But my grandfather, he owned the biggest seringal in the Caribbean. Well, that would account for your lack of concern about a paycheck. Look, it's not something I'm proud of. My grandfather couldn't rub two nickels together. I saw what it was like for a man not to be able to feed his family, and I swore, I swore it would never happen again. See, I guess we do have something in common after all. We're both the opposites of our grandfathers. as if it's the end of the world. Well, this may not be the end of the world, but you can certainly see it from here. Barry, I don't think Logan's thermal imager is working. There are ten dots on the screen. Where? Right in front of you. Snacking. The act 
fluoride rinse he used before bed fights cavities better than brushing alone. It lasts all night. Act, the all-night fluoride treatment. Yo, from my home studio, it's Ricky and Dee. Now, my man, Rick, a serious burger lover, is doing a blind taste test of McDonald's new McLean Deluxe Sandwich. Yo, man, the taste is going boom. McDonald's is the only one with this 91% fat-free lean beef Wait, fat. Wait, hold up. 91% fat-free? No, nah, man. Straight up. The taste is kicking. And it's a serious value. The, the new McLean Deluxe. 100% depth. On, On taste. Word up. Everyone calls me father, and I love a kid's cereal. Brave adults wrestle with the notion that Kellogg's Frosted Flakes is just for kids. I work with tigers. I never thought I'd love one. That delectable frosting, that incredible crunch, no wonder adults never outgrow the taste. Oh, I'm guilty. 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 <laughs> it's no crime. Frosted Flakes have the taste adults have grown to love. They're great. Well, she looked at me with her great big eyes, and she said she's scared of the chlorofluorocarbons in the air. Oh, it's amazing what these kids know. Oh, my computer. Uh, Yesterday, Chris is talking about the cursor. I think he's talking about some rude kid. <laughs> well, they don't know everything. Like, this sugar sweetened Kool-Aid's got less sugar than Coke or Pepsi. Less sugar? 25% mm -hmm. less. Mm. I didn't know that either. Well, you with 25% less sugar than Coke or Pepsi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they know everything. Having kids means having Kool-Aid sugar sweetened drink mix. Call me crazy, but I think it's going to be hard to find a good dry cleaner around here. Are you in charge here? Because I'm represented by the law firm of Nick Say, Katz and Solomon, and I can assure you this incident has civil suit written all over it. I don't believe it. Barry Tower Barry. Speak English. So are you the world-class dirtbag everyone says you are? Yes, I am, but somehow I make it work for me. I'm in love, Barry. L-O-V-E. I heard you got indicted for stock fraud. What did you do, jump bail? Let's just say I'm taking an extended vacation while I plan my defense. Well, what are you doing here? We're here to help you. Help us do what? Tell us which wine goes with shellfish? Now, wait a second. We're here to help you in your fight against the ranchers. Look, if I wanted two dilettantes, I would have called Donald and Ivana. Look, I don't appreciate being talked to in that way. Let me handle this. She doesn't appreciate being talked to in that way. Now, this is not some Upper East Side fundraiser. Well, you don't exactly sound like a local. I'm a lawyer. I came here from Miami to help organize the Coromantes. The ranchers hire pistoleros to, to drive them off the land that they've lived on all their lives. Then why don't you accept our help? What have you got to lose? Oh, just a race of people and a way of life. White people have a way of doing that, you know. Oh, Look, I'm just asking you to trust us. Yeah, right. That's what they ask the American Indian. Look, this is how the Coromantes live, collecting rubber from these trees. The ranchers come in and just clear-cut the land and forget about the long-term environmental impact. They use the land for 10 years and then all the nutrients are gone and it's useless. Economically, rubber would be much better. Well, then why don't you prove that? I don't have to prove anything to you. Not to me, to Abel Vasquez. He understands one thing, money. Now, if your idea makes sense to him on that level, he'll get with the program, believe me. Look, I know you've had a long trip and you're tired, so why don't you get some rest, we'll give you something to eat, and they'll take you back to your boat tonight. I am sorry that you came all this way for nothing. Well, what are you gonna do? We're dealing with the poster girl for PMS. Look, we did our best. I guess we'll be going back now. Okay. Guess not. Look, I don't know who you think you are, but you certainly seem to have a high opinion of yourself. Now, I don't mean to be rude, but after traveling upriver, a great personal writ of myself and Mr. Tarbury, I'll be damned if I'm simply going to turn around and go back again tonight. So, you're going to feed us as you said you would, and then provide us with a place to sleep. Excuse me. 
I'm leaving. You won't have to give me a ticket. This is a no parking zone. Well, where's the sign? I, I don't see a sign. Shouldn't there be a sign? Are you calling me a liar? No, absolutely not. Prevarication's completely absent here. You know, I don't have to complete this ticket. Really? That would be super, thank you. But I would have to replace the discarded ticket, possibly from my own wallet. Uh, oh, oh, I gotcha. Interestingly enough, I just happened to come into possession of a number of shares of Tarberry Enterprises. Yikes. There's a face only Fellini's mother could love. The whole family is murderous. Pistoleros. Those hired by the ranches to chase the Coromantes from the land. You see Coromantes? When somebody bothered the Zabarro family, somebody usually turn up dead if they turn up again at all. But that's where Mr. Tarberry and Miss St. Clair went to. I have to warn them. Um, please. I don't have any money for a bribe. <laughs> ah, gratuity. But it's imperative that I have my car. Um, let me ask you something. Is cable TV? Because I could get you a free hookup. Including the Disney Channel. Ooh, la nuba! <laughs> <laughs> la got you well? <laughs> She's talking about you, Bear. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know. She said she saw you on Jeopardy. <laughs> Tenemos cuatro casetas, ¿ok? A las cuatro entramos y acabamos con todo, ¿ok? Ready? Lo cuento. Did you really say that the fastest animal on four feet was a cow dropping from a helicopter? <laughs> Go ahead and laugh. But if you were $2,000 behind in the double jeopardy round, you might not be so cool and calm. How did you know what I was talking about? It took me over two years to learn the Coromandy dialect. Ever hear of Berlitz? my diethyl toluamide. I better cross-check my inventory. Okay. Got it. Check. Check a Rooney. Check a Rooney. Check a Mundo. Check, 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 check. All right. Radio on. Volume up. Volume down. really wanted to help these people. It's too bad they're making us leave. Maybe we should try to convince Renee one more time. At least then we'll know we tried our best. Gig's up, Barry. He's telling her that he spotted a chainsaw gang. Oh, who knows what he saw? The guy eats snake with squirrel sauce for dinner. Mr. Tarberry, I need you to stay. Why should we? 
There's going to be a kara kara. A showdown? Of sorts. We show up with our axes and machetes, and they show up with their chainsaws and maybe guns. I guess they figure after last night, we'll be too afraid to confront them. Isn't she amazing? Bluff counts for a lot, but it's got to be backed up by a willingness to act. The one thing that we do have in our favor is most of the chainsaw workers are Coromantes. They've already lost their land. They need the work, but they aren't willing to fight their brothers for it. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Well, what do you need us for? They're less likely to kill a white person. Thank you very much for having us. Barry! You're showing Danielle and me a side of you that's not very attractive. Don't you see? She's trying to prove that we are dilettantes. Well, she's doing a very good job. Come on, we're out of here. I'm staying. Me too. I saw you on, um, on Jeopardy, man. What a stupid answer. Well, I'd like to see you square off with some egghead from MIT. In fact, I'd like to see you spell MIT. <laughs> this land, it belongs to Rancho Mateiro. You're trespassing. Ask him if he has any proof other than the phony title on the front seat of the pickup. You have any proof of that? Other than the phony title on the front seat of your pickup? How do you know that? I want you all to know that you have offended the spirit of Black Jack Savage. These people have squatters' rights. These people have squatters' rights. According to San Pietro's Civil Code, Article 503. Where are you getting all this? Hey, who are you talking to, man, huh? Let's just say I was hanging out with me home girl and happened to see a few of her legal briefs. Oh, really? What else did you happen to see? Excuse me, don't you think you'd better deal with the psycho here? According to San Pietro's Code, Article 503, the Coromantes can maintain or reinstate their claim to this land by force if necessary. As long as they do so immediately. And while he's chewing on that, tell him not to even think about going for the pistol in his glove compartment or the rifles on the floor. Now, we don't want any trouble. But if you go for that pistol in your glove compartment with those rifles on the floor of that pickup, I can't be responsible for what'll happen. We don't mess around with the ghost of Blackjack Savage. <laughs> On the phony title, where our guns were tall. Who? Barry Tarberry. What of the American woman? She's still there, Papa. Get up. This union movement is turning into a snake. And when a snake is in your path, and there is no other way around, you kill it. You cut his head off. Barry Tarberry and the American woman must die.
the point, Jack? You can't do anything about it. Look, is there something you want? I'm busy. After a Akata Akata, there's usually some kind of payback. I have this friend who's interested in you. So where is this friend? Could we go inside? is a ghost. A ghost? <laughs> well, is, is he here now? He's right in front of you. <laughs> Aren't you going to introduce us? Renee, Blackjack Savage. Jack, Renee. <laughs> Tell her I care about her. She doesn't even know you. You don't just jump in like that. Well, I'm sorry. It's been 300 years since I've had a date. You're working on an insanity defense, aren't you? Because if you are, it is looking pretty good from here. I told you, she wouldn't buy it. Tell her. He cares about you. Not like that. Tell her in the first person. But he wants me to say it in the first person. Yes, of course. I care about you. You're hot looking. Oh, I am definitely not going to say that. Say it. Youth is for an hour. Beauty is a flower, but love is the jewel that wins the world. That is not what I said. Mm, that's, uh, that's nice. But it'll do. Mr. Tarberry, this is all very amusing. And if I were into dating ghosts, really, I would be very interested. But you see, I, I tried to date within my own species. I tried. A berry. Get her to ask me something. She knows about the Coromante history. If you ask him something about the Coromante history, he'll know it. He was there. Now, wait a minute. Now, don't you think this has gone far enough? One question and we're out of here. Please. Oh, OK. Um, OK, who were the, the three original leaders of the Coromante village? Isenji, Mobutu, Kalanga. Isenji, Mobutu, Kalanga. <laughs> yes. We got her. <laughs> Have you seen Mr. Tarbury? If I had the opportunity, I'd take you to the Maravillani Falls. It's the only place on the island that matches your view. the homing device on the boat is still operative. Now, if I can just triangulate the coordinates. <laughs> Hello, set, come one. I'm going to use your money. Excuse me? Uh, could you speak up? My uh, inner occipital membrane suffered some recent collateral damage. Uh, money. Uh, Manny. Money! Oh, oh! Oh, you're a policeman. Oh, you want to see my ID? Oh! <laughs> First, I thought you said Manny. <laughs> uh, hey, fellas, uh, uh, I'm not the type to give you much trouble. I, I was once beat up at an Amish picnic. What is this? That? Uh-huh. That? 
is a hundred shares of Tarberry Enterprises. Keep it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, Tarberry, eh? Hello, Ian. I'm sorry. Fresh fish. Change of pace from the snake. You'd like that, wouldn't you? What? Look, why don't you go and give your fresh fish to your... your lawyer? Well, mainly because he's in New York and he's not that good of a lawyer. Did I miss something? After all this, you still give me the money to my river. You can take it. You know what? Yes, you don't pick them. You know why them get hurt? You should know why I'm going to ask this. After all this. What happened? The Flint Stellaros have retaliated. Nobody got hurt this time. What are they arguing about? Some of them want to give up and take the money. It's common for the ranchers to offer the poor man these money to give up any claim to the land that they live on. How much money? About $200. Listen, Barry, you've got to convince these people to stay together. It's their only hope. You don't stop it. Me wife from picking it off on the yard. And Wait, stop, stop, the yard. Yard. Wait a second. Stop it. Stop it, both of you. Don't you see what's happening? This is exactly what the ranchers want. Divide and conquer. Now, your rights to this land are worth a lot more than $200. At least we'd be alive to spend it. But you won't be free. What do you know about freedom? I know a lot about it because I don't have mine. I can't go back to my country. I can't visit my family. I can't even leave this godforsaken island. And if we stay, they'll kill us. But in unity, there's strength. Now, if we're united, then the Pistoleros will have to understand that the death of even one person will not kill the momentum of this fight. At least think about it. Don't make a decision like this in the heat of battle. Go on home. It's OK. Go on home. It's all right. I'm really sorry about earlier. Sure. Barry, that was really nice. You liked it? Yeah, well, just when I think I've got you pegged as a lying, self-serving, double-dealing dirtbag, you go and do something nice. Well, you know, a union official gave me that exact same speech across a bargaining table one time, just before I crushed him like a little old lady in a crosswalk. Ah, uh, it's the thought that counts. What's wrong? You didn't like the speech? No, um, I thought it was terrific. Look, I didn't want to tell you this in front of the others, but the Pistoleros came and delivered an annuncio. I found it outside my door. What's an annuncio? It's a death notice, not so much a threat as a statement of fact. It's kind of, of a tradition in the island interior. Before you kill somebody, you tell them that you're going to do it. Well, we better put some people outside your house. They've had your name on it. Me? What did I do? Bikata Akata. Jack, uh, you have to do your ghost thing. You know, you possess a lower life form, be a bird or something, find the Pistoleros and find out what their plans are. Hi. Quickly. Bird, uh, can you talk? I need your help. Uh, my name's Logan Murphy. Uh, some people call me FX. Uh, they're holding me hostage, see? And um, uh, hey, 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 say, stop that! <laughs> no, 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 stop that! He's in there. Contained lead storage facility. 
used to transmit electrical current at a measured amperage rate of 12 volts. Oh, this is a car battery. Listen, I think you should know I have a very low pain threshold, not to mention a lactose intolerance. Good. Then this won't take long. Unless my sons want a little amusement afterwards. Please, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'll tell you things you don't want to know. I used to work for the Pentagon. Shut up. I can do that. Why? Why did you come to the interior? To warn Mr. Tarberry about the DeBaris family. They're ruthless pistoleros hired by the ranchers to run the Comorantes off their land. These people are... You look familiar. Allow me to introduce my son, Julio de Barros. Julio, this is the man who is going to hear Barry Tarberry. back by now. Who knows when they'll show up. If they'll show up, why don't you just try and relax? I can't. We'll be able to see anyone coming on the thermal imager. Come on, sit down. There. Is that better? Much. I just want you to know how much this means to me, what you're doing. That's no big deal. You know, you've changed. You're not the same man who wrote in his book. It's easy to look out for number one because there's... there is no number two. Maybe I haven't changed, Danielle. Maybe I'm still the same and you just don't realize it. I hardly think a man who said that would come up into the interior and fight for a people he doesn't even know. Danielle, I have to be honest with you. I lied. I didn't come in here to help the Carmontes. I came here because I wanted to... I wanted to spend time with you. Let me get this straight. You're saying that in order to endear yourself to me, you lied to me and endangered my life? Although when you say it like that, it doesn't sound very romantic, does it? They get you to stop talking. One of them punched me. Then they tied something to my back. <gasps> oh, my God. Don't panic. Logan, do you faint easily? Oh, it's not a bee, is it? No, it's a bomb. OK. First thing we have to do is get as far away from here as possible. <laughs> what about the bomb? Look! Well, we have to defuse the bomb. Stileros. What about the bomb? We'll be sitting ducks to go out. Hey, hey, let's defuse the bomb. Our only chance is if we defuse the bomb. Good idea! Where the hell have you been? I just told you! I'm fine, thank you, and how are you? I know how you are, you're dead! Mr. Tarberry! Not you, Logan. Barry, you've got big trouble out there. I don't mean to interrupt you and your little friend, but I got a bomb stuck to my back! All right, Logan, just tell me what I should do. All right, first, take a look at the bomb. Tell me everything you see. Very important, probably the most important part. I see a bunch of wires. Can you be a little more specific? Color, length, what they're attached to, anything? There are six sticks, but it doesn't look like dynamite. They're quite colored. And they're wired to a, a six-volt battery, and the battery's connected to a digital clock by a red wire and a green wire. Oh, 
Oh, he says not a white wire with black stripes. And a white wire with black stripes. Damn. Is that bad? Don't touch that. Don't touch what? Anything. Oh. Uh-oh. Mr. Tarberry, don't say uh-oh to a man who's got a bomb strapped to his back. We've only got 55 seconds. Uh, Barry. Not now, Jack. I'm off to my elbows in TNT. Pentolite. What? It's a combination of TNT and PETN. I'm going to need someone to call out the time in five-second increments. The amount of time remaining is going to affect my diffusing strategy. I'll do it. All right, I'm all ears, Logan. 45 seconds. First, we have to determine if it's a hardwired device or if it has domino relays. Logan, if you don't talk English, we're all going to be human McNuggets here. The red wire should be connected to a little transistor. Next to that, is there a small silver box the color of mercury? Yes! We're dead. Logan! 35 seconds. Okay, first, we have to go around the mercury trigger switch. Make sure you take uh, the alligator clips. Okay. All right, connecting them to where the red terminal switch is connected to the green terminal switch. 30 seconds. Very careful. Make sure you don't touch anything else or... Or what? 25 seconds. Or boom. to reroute and go around the timer switch. Make sure you cross-circuit everything between the timer, detonator, and fuse caps. Logan, in English, please. 15 seconds. Cut the green wire first, then the red one. Do not cut the white wire with the black stripes. They're kind of close together, Logan. What happens if I cut the white wire? It would be bad. 10 seconds. said, the best offense is a good defense. <laughs> now we have something to bargain with. I am proud to announce the establishment of extractive reserves, an idea I thought of myself. <clears throat> this designation means that the forests cannot be cut. Reserves we set aside large areas of forests in long-term lease agreements between the government and the forest dwellers. These areas can only be used in sustainable ways. The harvest of rubber, nuts, and the like. San Pietro will be the model for the rest of the Caribbean. We urge our neighbors to join us me apologizing to you. There's no need. No, there is, because without your help, we never could have proven to Vasquez the economic viability of extractive reserves. I just made a few phone calls. Well, if you need anyone to testify for you, you know, about your uh, insanity defense, just give me a call. You still don't believe me, do you? About the ghost? <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, oh, by the way, I almost forgot. The Coromantes have voted you honorary president of their Rural Workers Union. Congratulations. Thank you. So that's what this is all about. The talking to yourself, the, the odd behavior, uh, dressing up like a pirate. Sometimes you're nasty to me, sometimes you're nice to me. You're building an insanity plea. You're on to me, Logan. Your secret's safe with me. <laughs> Jack. Jack, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Jack.
Jack, stop that right now. Jack? Don't you dare. Don't you... Coming up next, it's Exposé. Exposé goes inside the Florida sugarcane fields that some call modern slave camps. I'm Tom Brokaw. We'll take an undercover look at what might be the worst working conditions in America on Exposé next. Followed by Real Life with Jane Pauley. I'm Jane Pauley. See how life for an ordinary family stops as they struggle to save their son from a killer disease. Courage, determination, and triumph on Real Life tonight.